Shalom, Yasharala Shalom. This your Al Kadash Alahayim coming at you with another quick lesson. First and foremost, I like to say Ka Hala Abanawa Yahawa Bahasham Yahawa Shai Hamashiyak Amanawa Barakata Yahawa being the name of our Heavenly Father, the Ancient of Days, the Lord of Hosts, the Almighty, and Yahawa Shai being the name of His only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. All right, now we're we're currently entering into the new moon, the sixth month, right? According to the Hebrew calendar, um, and according to the Hebrew calendar, the sixth month is known as El Yul, right? The Hebrew calendar is a lunar calendar, and El Yul, the sixth month, typically falls in late August to September on the Gregorian calendar, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna mention some key points about the sixth month right the sixth month is called el yul right the post exilic hebrew calendar in the scriptures before the babylonian exile months was often referred to by their number rather than by a specific name right so we wasn't calling months of the year by names we wasn't giving them names right before exile Right, we was calling them by the names or the uh, like it by the numbers month one, month two, month three, month four, month five, etc. etc. Right, but we adapted certain customs when we was in uh, we adapted certain customs when we was in uh, subjection to the other nations, like naming the months. Right, so the month El Yule or the sixth month usually occurs between August and September in the Gregorian calendar depending on the lunar cycle. So whatever uh, the cycle of the moon goes by, that's what that's what we go by because our months is based off a lunar cycle. Right? Our months are based off a lunar cycle. Right? And a lot of people like to say, Oh yeah, this is a Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. But technically is not a sabbath right we have a sabbath which is a weekly sabbath a seven day sabbath sabbath that is consecutive the new moon according to to the scriptures is not considered a sabbath day right there is no strict um prohibitations mm -hmm. on uh, the new moons right you can cook um you could do certain things that you can't do on the shabbat on the new moon Right, but this still is a day of cultural observance, meaning you should be spending your time, energy, with all your heart, mind, and soul fixated on the Most High, being grateful and 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 thankful that the Most High allowed you to see a new month, and and it's time to renew your mind in the beginning of these new moons, man. Set set your mind aright, set your heart aright, so you could prepare yourself for this up and coming month, because. This up and coming month, right? The sixth month is a powerful month to prepare yourself, to to cleanse yourself and purify yourself for the holiest month of the year, right? When it comes to uh, the seventh month that's coming up next month, right? Because the seventh month is significant because we had a feast of trumpets, blowing of the trumpets, the memorial blowing of the trumpets, and then we have the day of atonement. Well, we atone for our sins. Uh, we fast as a memorial for for the Day of Atonement, right? In in repentance, um, and then we got the Feast of Tabernacles, where we dwell in booths for for a full week, man. Right. So we got to prepare ourselves for this up and coming month, the seventh month. This month, we got to start getting ready this month for the for the holiest uh, month of the year, right? So, uh, in biblical references, uh, the book of Haggai, the first chapter in the first verse, um, it mentions the sixth month, right? When it goes into the second year of Darius the king in the sixth month, in the first day of the month came the word of Yahweh by Haggai, the prophet, unto Zerubbabel, right? So, when you read Haggai, the first chapter, that's going into the sixth month, right? And also, when you go to the book of Nehemiah, the sixth chapter in the 15th verse, Right, Nehemiah refers to uh, El Yul as the month when the wall of Jerusalem was completed. Right, so when you go to Nehemiah 
6 and 15 it'll, it'll say so the walls was finished on the 25th day of the month of El Yul uh, in 52 days right and um, you could do that for homework you know what I'm saying read read uh, Haggai the first chapter and uh, read Nehemiah the sixth chapter so you can get things put into perspective what our forefathers and the ancient prophets the prophets of old was doing during this time and season man right so the significance of the month of El Yule or the sixth month is the prepare, uh, preparation for the high holy days like I just mentioned man we got to prepare ourselves for these up and coming high holy days man when you come into these feast days and these uh, high holy days are the most high you have to you have to purge your sins man you have to pray and fast man get it get in a state of humility put that pride down humble yourself man and trust in the lord yahweh all the time at all times man trust in the most high right because we get tried that furnace get hot sometimes and we kind of lose lose trust with the most high because things ain't going the way we want them to go right so during this six month i encourage brothers and sisters to start preparing yourselves for the up and coming uh month next month you know what i'm saying just start shedding off that old man start doing things that that you wouldn't normally do like spend more time in the word you know spend more time seeking the most high this month so you could be prepared for the month to come right because like i said earlier the, the the seventh month the blowing of the trumpets is, is, is an important high holy day man right the day the day of atonement is a very important high holy day as well as the feast of tabernacles right so it's time to you know reflect and seek the most high's mercy man right repentance and seeking forgiveness that should be the state of mind you should be in for this for this month right here so you can already be on point when when the seventh month come lord willing we alive and well to see the seventh month right so in uh agricultural context uh el yule or the sixth month is associated with the end of summer and the beginning of the autumn harvest in israel right it's a time when the first fruits of the new agricultural year starts to be gathered leading into a major harvest festival the feast of tabernacles right or the feast of end gathering in the seventh month right so it's a it's a powerful month we just entered into man the sixth month like like i said earlier we used to then give months names we used to just call them by numbers just like we didn't give days of the weeks names we just called it by number man all right so this would be considered the first day of the new month but according to our our weekly cycle yeah we are in the second day of our weekly cycle um and we have a few of uh, uh five more days to go until we get into the shabbat right so just to clarify that you know what i'm saying um the new moon is not considered a sabbath according to the scriptures but we you know we we keep it holy as if it was a sabbath day all right we keep it set apart as if it was a saturday right you can still work right you can still do servile work it's just a it's just a time of reflecting and acknowledging and paying homage to the most high for his grace and mercy Right, so um, this this new moon class, man, I'm gonna be going into godly sorrow, right, or godly depression. You know what I'm saying? It's it's okay to have a balance in this world, man. The Most High is a just God, right? He's a just power, and and he's about a a, a balance, man. Right. Um, right now we amongst a lot of heathens in the land of our captivity, so we pick up their ways. And sometimes, you know, we go against the most high. And when we do go against the most high, you're going to feel depressed. You're going to feel sorrowful, right? Because you've been doing wickedness. And now you being plagued or being tried or being judged. And now the most high is punishing you. So now you're depressed. You have anxiety, right? But then on the on the right-hand side, you're, you're doing what the most high say do. You're keeping the commandments to the best that you can. Right, you informing and warning your people of depending judgment on Babylon, right? You working out your own salvation with fear and trembling, but yet you feel depressed, you feel sorrowful, 
right? Mm -hmm. You feel like things ain't going your way. You feel miserable, but in righteousness though, right? So we we going we going to talk about godly sorrow, man. Let's go to the book of Ecclesiasticus, the 21st chapter and the 11th verse in the Apocrypha. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 21 and verse 11 and it reads he that keepeth the law of the lord getteth the understanding thereof and the perfection of the fear of the lord is wisdom right so when you keep the law of the most high yahweh you get the understanding of why certain things happen to you right you you get the understanding of why the most high put this law in place you you're able to reflect on on certain things that is that is above human comprehension right you start getting the, the understanding from the heavens right he that keepeth the law of the lord getteth understanding thereof you get the understanding when you keep the law and the perfection of the fear of the lord is wisdom and that's what you keep in the law for to perfect that healthy fear of the most high right Cause, cause you, while you keeping the commandments, it, it comes times where you transgress, man. It comes times where you actually transgress the laws of the Most High, and that should instill fear in you, right? Cause you know you're doing something wrong, right? And the perfection of the fear of the Lord is wisdom, right? So you want to perfect that fear. You want to always know. In your heart, mind, and soul when you transgress. A lot of people transgress and they don't even know they transgress. They transgressing out of ignorance. And they being judged for their ignorance as well. Right? So when you transgress, you know, out of, out of um, ignorance. Or when you transgress, knowing that you transgress. Knowing that you done went off. You have a better understanding of repentance and humiliation. And, and falling and getting back up. Right? So he that keepeth the law of the Lord getteth understanding thereof, and the perfection of the fear of the Lord is wisdom. And you want to perfect that fear, because that's going to give you knowledge, wisdom, and understanding to keep striving through this up and coming month. Right? So let's go to the book of Romans, chapter 2, and verse 29. All right? The book of Romans, chapter 2. In verse 29 and it reads but he is a Jew which is one outwardly so like it but he is a Jew which is one inwardly and the circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is not of men but of the most high right so but he is a Jew which is one inwardly so you got to be a you got to be an Israelite inwardly. You got to be you got to be you got to be a Jew inwardly, not just on the outer appearance, right? Not just on the outer appearance. You got on your your fringes, you got on your zzz, right? You got on your 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 head wrap, right? You walking with a Bible in your hand, right? But but you transgressing the commandments, right? That that's just you appearing to be godly on the outer appearance, but inwardly you you're not you're not holy at all. You're not set apart at all. You're still following customs of this world, right? You're still not rebuking your neighbor and loving your neighbor as yourself. You 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 got to be a Jew inwardly first and foremost. And I'm not saying that no, you don't have to wear your fringes or you don't have to wear your zzz, right? I'm not saying that. You still got to do that as well. But the most important thing is being a Jew inwardly within your heart, mind, soul, and spirit, right? And you also got to be of the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? To be a Jew inwardly. And and that comes with responsibility, knowing that you are a descendant of, of the chosen of the Most High, right? So you have a responsibility for to fulfill, right? You have to be a Jew inwardly. And circumcision that is of the heart, like the Most High commanded us in Deuteronomy, man, we we gotta we gotta be circumcised in the heart. We gotta circumcise the foreskin of our heart, meaning put away those fleshly desires, those fleshly lusts, those carnal things, 
right? In the spirit and not the letter, whose praise is not of man, but it but of the most high. That's who you that's who you want to reward you and praise you is the most high. You want to do things in the sight of the most high to please the most high and not to please men. It's a lot of men pleasers in the nation of Israel, man. You you more concerned about impressing the elders or your brethren or the sisters of the congregation. No, you need to be worried about impressing the most high. And you do that by being obedient. Right? Um Let's go to the book of Romans chapter 7 and verse 14. Because I'm going to give you a quick understanding, man. The law is spiritual, right? This is the book of Romans chapter 7 and verse 14. And it reads, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. So the laws of the Most High is spiritual, first and foremost. Right? It's psychological first. You got to keep the laws in your inward parts first, inwardly. And your heart, mind, and soul, and then the rest will follow. The body will follow, right? But you got to tame your, your heart, mind, and soul to be submissive to the Most High and His will, first and foremost. Why? Because the law is spiritual. Like Yahweh Shai say, man, if you look on a woman to lust after her, you have committed adultery in your heart already. You, you sin it in your heart. And that's where sin is conceived first, right? You already sin it. You must repent. For those, for those wicked imaginations that you have in your heart. You got to repent, man, on a daily basis if you having them on a daily basis. Right? Like the most I say, man, the thought of foolishness is sin. You transgressing by thinking of breaking the law. Right? If you think about stealing, right? You have to repent for even having that thought in your mind, man. Right? Why? Because the law is spiritual. But I am carnal, sold under sin. But we in this carnal flesh. Right? We in captivity. We in bondage to our flesh, man. Right? So that's where the spiritual battle is at. That's where the spiritual warfare is at in your heart, mind, and soul. Because your flesh is warring against the law of your, your heart. Right? So we got to be mindful that, you know, people running around saying, oh, I'm spiritual. I'm spiritual. Oh, oh is you keeping the laws of the Most High? If you're not keeping the laws of the Most High, you're definitely not spiritual. Because the laws of the Most High are spiritual. Right? And you must keep them inwardly first and foremost. You must keep the law in your inward parts first. Right? And then it will show on the outer appearance. Right? So um, let's go to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 18. The book of Ecclesiastes... Right? The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1... In verse 18, man. Alright, because there's a righteous depression and there's a wicked depression. This is the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 18. And, and it reads, For in much wisdom is much grief. And he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. Right? So in much wisdom is much grief. Um, um, is much grief. Salakia. Is much grief, right? Just like we went into in uh, Ecclesiastes 21 and 11, right? About that perfection of the fear of the Lord is wisdom, right? The perfection of the fear of the Lord is wisdom. For in much wisdom is much grief, right? So when you perfect that healthy fear of the Most High, hey, it's grievous out here in these streets, man. It's grievous, right? Because we, we really in the valley of the shadow of death. The Most High can make a turn of events in the blink of an eye man right for you things could be on the up and up and hey, you go off and you don't repent the most i can turn this into hell like literally right if you're not careful because in much wisdom is much grief in much wisdom you understand that hey if i violate the laws of the most high i am going to be judged if i violate the laws of the most high things are not going to go my way Right? If I violate the laws of the Most High, I'm liable to be put to death. Right? That's that's grievous, man. That's grievous. Right? And say, and he that increase of knowledge, increase of sorrow. And when you increase the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Most High, you're going to become sorrowful. Right? Because now you're looking at your, your family, you're looking at your household, you're looking at your, your peoples, your friends, 
right? And you see them in serious danger, right? Because they don't know the Lord. You see your nation of people in grave danger, and they don't even know why they've been tormented the way they've been tormented. You know that eating abominable foods torment their heart, mind, and soul, but they don't know it. And they bragging about going to eat at Red Lobster. They grab they they bragging about a low country boy. They 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 bragging about sinning against the most high. And and you you got the knowledge so you know that they ass is in trouble, man. And ain't nothing you can do about it except for warn them and, and tell them to repent and tell them to read their Bible, man. Turn away from their transgressions. That's all you can do. Whether they hear or forbear. Right? Because he that increase of knowledge, increase of sorrow, right? This ain't an easy walk, walking with the Most High in this crooked and wicked world, man. It ain't. And Ye our Lord Hamashiach Yehoshua, he felt this same sorrow, right? He felt this same sorrow, man. The Most High sent his only begotten son, who was wiser than Solomon. So he had the wisdom, and he was grieved. By the wisdom that he had, man. And when he increased knowledge, what he did, he increased sorrow, man. Our Lord was full of sorrow and grief, man. Right? A synonymous word with sorrow is depression. All right? And this ain't when it, when he says that you're gonna increase knowledge and then you're gonna increase sorrow, that is not wicked sorrow. It is not wicked depression, it's a righteous depression. Right, it's a it's a righteous depression. It's not it's not an evil depression. Some people depressed because they homosexuals and you know they not accepted by society and you know they going against the Most High and they feeling the wrath of his his indignation, so they depressed. Right, and then you have that man who is walking in the light of the law, and and he's doing everything in his power to to please the Most High, but yet his family is attacking him, saying he's in a cult. Or saying that he's wicked for not coming to mama house on Christmas Day. Right? There, there's a righteous sorrow as well, man. Right? Let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 53. And let's start at... Let's start at the top. Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 1. And it reads, Who have believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord Yahweh revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He have no form of comeliness, meaning beauty. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Now this is going into doctrine, right? Who have believed our report? Meaning the doctrine that we teach in that, that comes with the scriptures, the true doctrine. The good doctrine of the Most High, right? Keeping of the commandments and keeping the faith, right? And to whom is the arm of the Most High revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, right? Like, like in Psalms 1, man, you want to be planted by the rivers of water. When you read this word, when you read this, this Bible on a daily basis and practice and apply what you're reading, you're going to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, man. Right, and as a root out of a dry ground, he have no form or com so like he have no form nor comeliness. Speaking of our Lord Hamashiach Yehoshua, he has no form nor comeliness nor beauty. He have uh, no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Right, so you know the word of the Most High is, is not beautiful. Yehoshua is not a beautiful person to look upon. Right. There's no desire. Uh, there's no beauty that we should desire him. Like when you look at at a at a at a regular book in a bookstore, you see a nice cover on it. The Arthur May gave it a, a a real dope name, right? When you open up this book, it has the the contents or the contents. So like it has the contents. You're looking at the title or the contents, and they all sound real interesting. And you might flip through this book. They got pictures in this book, right? And, and it's, a, it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful book to look at. It looks beautiful on the outside. But when you read through this book, 
it, it has no real knowledge, wisdom, and understanding in it. It's just entertaining, right? Now, when you get the Bible, it's a, it's a plain book, right? It ain't, it ain't no real cover on it, right? It ain't no real cover on it. It's a bunch of chapters, a bunch of people that done wrote the book, right? It ain't nothing to be desired. It ain't beautiful to look at. It ain't beautiful to open up. It's not interesting, right? To those that, that don't know, it's not interesting. The same with our Lord Yahweh Shah, man. There is no beauty that we should desire him. Verse 3, and this the point. He is despised and rejected of men, right? A man of sorrows. So Yahweh Shah is despised and rejected of men. Just like this book, the, the scriptures. The scriptures is despised. And men reject the scriptures. Just like our, our Lord Hamashiach Yahweh Shah. When he was in the flesh, he was desired, so like he was despised and rejected of men, right? He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, right? Because in much wisdom is much grief, and when you increase knowledge, you increase sorrow. And that's what he did. He increased sorrow, man, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief, right? Meaning he was, he always had grief in his company man he was always grieved about something and we hid as if it was our faces from him he was despised and we esteemed him not right so we we denied our lord right we denied his his pain and his agony and his worry and his sorrow and his depression right we didn't know what was wrong with our lord man but he, he had that knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, and he understood that his people was in grave danger. They wasn't repenting. They was following after the ways of the heathens. They were celebrating pagan customs. They didn't give a damn about what the word of the Lord had to say, man. And he, he was sorrowful for that. He was sorrowful. The same way we sorrowful. In righteousness, though, it's not... It's not, it's not a wicked sorrow. It's a righteous sorrow, man. It's a balance to all this, man. You have you have wicked sorrows where, where, where you going against the Most High and you want to put yourself to death. you that depressed. And then you have righteous sorrow, right? Where you ready to get put to death to, to get away from this captivity, right? Where you ready to, to, to give up the ghost for the, for the word of the Most High, man. You, re you, you, you rather stand bold on the word of the Lord and, and be looked at like you in a damn cult. Your family, oh, he's a black Hebrew Israelite. The, it ain't, that ain't even in the scriptures, man. You a damn agent coming out talking about a damn black Hebrew Israelite. No, you's an agent that's trying to get people to turn away from the Most High. Right? But our Lord was acquainted with grief, man. And we got to understand that. Right? Let's go to the book of Luke chapter 2. And let's start at verse 40. The book of Luke, chapter 2, and verse 40. Right? This is the book of Luke, chapter 2, and verse 40, and it reads, And the child grew, speaking of our Lord, Hamashiach, Yahweh, and the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, Right? Because the law is spiritual. Right? He was obtained into the law, statutes, and commandments. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom. And the grace of the Most High was upon him. Right? So Yahweh Shah was filled with wisdom at a very young age. Verse 41. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. So Yahweh was keeping the ceremonial laws, as you should be keeping the ceremonial laws, the high holy days. Verse 43, and when they had fulfilled the days and they returned, the child Yahweh tarried behind him. So like it, the child Yahweh tarried behind in Jerusalem and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in company, went a day's journey and they sought him among their kinfolk and acquaintance right so they thought he was still with them but Yahweh shot terry behind he stayed behind in jerusalem while his parents left while his mother and father left verse 45 
And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. So they couldn't find Yahushua. They panicking. They worried. They asking their family, "Hey, y'all seen? Y'all seen your cousin? You saw your nephew? You saw? You saw Yahushua?" They like, "No, nah, we ain't seen him, man. And we ain't seen him in a while." So they went back looking for him. His parents, right? They went back to Jerusalem seeking him. Verse forty-six, and it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple. So they went. <laughs> They went three days looking for him, man. He was missing. In today's time, they would have put out a, a police report, you know, an APP out looking for him, right? So it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple, and he was in the temple, right? He wasn't in the streets. He wasn't, you know, out doing nothing wicked. He was in the temple. What was he doing in the temple? Sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. Right. So in this context, when he was sitting in the midst of the doctors, those are doctors of the law, man. The I main your physicians like regular physicians. Those are doctors of the law, meaning they are very wise and understanding when it comes to the law, statutes and commandments of the most high. So he was hearing them. He was listening to them, listening to them, gaining wisdom. And he was asking them questions, challenging them. Right. Seeking, seeking uh, knowledge. Verse 47. And all that heard him was astonished at his understanding and answers. So even these doctors of the law, they was amazed at this young 12 year old child asking these questions and answering these questions, man. Right. Verse 48. And when they saw him, they were amazed. So his parents came and seen what he was doing and they was amazed as well. And his and his mother said unto him, son, why hast thou thus dealt with us behold thy father and i have sought thee sorrowing right so thy father joseph is his biological father and i have sought thee sorrowing they was worried they was panicking they didn't know that where their son was at he didn't communicate with them what it what he was what he was doing right he took it upon himself to stay back you know what my family finna leave he probably you know yeah i wish i probably he was crafty with it he probably plotted you know what I'm saying? He probably watching his parents, you know, talking and ch chopping it up with everybody, sipping on a little wine or something. You know, they was having a good time, saying their goodbyes and stuff. He peeping around the corner watching them. You know what I'm saying? And it's time to go. He acting like he leaving with them. You know, he walking with them when they walk off. And next thing you know, he started distancing himself, man. He started falling back a little bit, walking a little slow. Until eventually he turned around and ran back to the temple. Right? But but his parents was worried about him. They say they, they sought thee sorrowing. Verse 49. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business? He like, why y'all looking for me? Y'all know I'm in the temple gaining this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. You know where I'm at. I'm in the temple. Verse 50. And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth. And was subject unto them, but his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Yahweh increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with the Most High and man. So Yahweh he began to increase in wisdom and stature, man. His mama laid all them words to, to, to heart, what he said. She was meditating on what he said. You know, I got to be about my father's business. What did he mean? He got to be about Joseph's business. You know what I'm saying? That's probably what she's thinking in her heart. I'm not sure, but that's probably what she was thinking. She was meditating. She was contemplating on what he told her in her heart, man. So she's like, what business is he talking about about his father? What? What he? Right? But he grew in wisdom. That's the key point. He grew. He increased in wisdom, the fear of the Most High. He perfected that fear. And in stature and favor with the Most High and man. Right, and we want to model ourselves after young Hamashiach, man. Right, we want to model ourselves after after young Hamashiach. Right, so when you increase that wisdom, you increase sorrow. Let's go to Second Corinthians, chapter seven and verse ten. The book of Second Corinthians, chapter seven, and verse ten, and it reads, "For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation." Not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Right? So, 
that's that's the point, right? Let me jump up to verse 9. And I'm going to go ahead and go into it. Verse 9. Now I rejoice not that ye were made sorry, but the but that ye sorrowed to repentance. Right? That ye sorrowed to repentance. You know what I'm saying? Because once you transgress the law through the spirit, right? Because that's where you transgress first. You, you transgress the law in your heart first. And then you become sorry. But you don't want to let your sins weigh you down to the point where you feel like you can't overcome your challenges. Right? Now, I rejoice not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. When you, when you feel as if you're not worthy, you want to repent and get back up and keep going. You want to get it right. Or oh, I keep falling victim to pornography. Or I keep falling victim to smoking weed. Or I keep falling victim to lusting in my heart committing adultery right don't don't become so sorry that you just give in to it and give up trying to keep the commandments no right but that ye sorrow to repentance turn away from your wicked ways man for ye were made sorry after a godly manner that ye might receive damage by us in nothing right for godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, right? So godly sorrow, godly depression, once you get all this wisdom, right? For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. That's what righteous sorrow do or godly sorrow do, right? Because there's a wicked sorrow and there's a, a righteous sorrow. Godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation and not to be repented of. Right. But the sorrow of the world work of death. That's why wicked sorrow or depression, you end up killing yourself, end up harming somebody else, killing your family, then killing yourself because that's that's sorrow of the world, man. Right. But the sorrow of the world work of death. You don't want to have worldly sorrow going against the most high, transgressing his commandments, not repenting from it. Right. Not being so sorry that you that you not being so sorrowful that you repent to salvation, but you being so sorrowful in the world that you're ready to, to harm yourself and others. Right. So we got to be able to discern between the two godly sorrow and evil sorrow. Right. Let me let me get one more precept and I'm going to close out, man. All right. Let's go to the book of First Peter, chapter three and verse 14. So you want to have godly sorrow in these last days, righteous sorrow. You want to increase your knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And by doing that, you're going to increase grief and you're going to increase sorrow, man. That's just what it is, right? This is the book of 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 14. And it reads, But if ye suffer for righteousness sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. Right, like Stephen, man. Stephen, Stephen, when he was stoned to death, he suffered for righteousness sake. Right, and he was happy that he was being put to death at the hands of his brethren for, for, for standing on the Most High's business, man. Right, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. Who terror or who we shouldn't be afraid of? Whose terror we shouldn't be afraid of? I, the the, the, the uh, enemies of our own house, man. The enemies of our own nation that's telling us that we in a cult. That's telling us that we wicked and that we serve the devil and that the most high not dealing with us. Don't be afraid of their terror, neither be troubled at it, man. Fear not the imaginations against thee, and let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. Right? Verse 15. But sanctify your how power in your hearts, and always and be ready always to give an answer to every man that seeketh you a reason. Of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Right? So we got to always sanctify the most high in our mind. Hearts and souls, man. We always got to sanctify the most high in our heart. And we always got to be ready to give an answer to those that ask us about our hope in the most high. With meekness, humility, and with fear. Verse 16. Having a good conscience. That whereas they speak evil of you as evildoers. They may be ashamed that falsely accuse you of your good conversation in Hamashiach Yahweh 
right? So you want to keep that good conscience going, and you do that by being obedient to the to the law, which is spiritual, right? But you you also have to do the physical requirements that's in the law as well, like wearing your fringes, right? Niggas that teach you to to break the least of the commandments, hey, they gonna be called least in the kingdom. Hey, wear your fringes, man, right? Because it's a commandment to repent when you go off, and your fringes is a reminder to repent from your transgressions, right? Yeah, you gonna slip up and and. Sin while you wearing your fringes. Yeah, you're gonna slip up and sin while you wearing your fringes. That's a given, right? But you also look upon them fringes and remember the covenant that the most high made with us. And you repent, right? So having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Hamashiach Yahweh. Verse 17, and this is this is the point. For it is better. If the will of the Most High be so, that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. Right? It's better that you suffer for well-doing, keeping the commandments, keeping the faith, doing what's required of you, keeping the high holy days, acknowledging the new moon, dedicating your heart, mind, and soul to worship the Most High and sanctify the Most High in your heart on the new moon. Right? And you suffer for doing that. Than to suffer for doing evil. Right? Celebrating Labor Day. Right? Barbecuing, eating pork. Having all filthy communications with your brethren, with your brothers and sisters. Right? Just being a demon, man. And now you're depressed and now you're suffering. Right? It's better to suffer for doing well, for well doing, than for doing evil, man. Just, you know, just put that in your memory bank. You know, brethren and uh, Akwathium. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's the new moon six month. You know, we got to get it together, man. It's time to purge out these iniquities. It's time to purge these sins. Full throttle, man, so we could appear before the Most High with a pure pure heart. All right? So enjoy your new moon. You know, uh, sip a little something for me. All right? Drink a little something for me. Um, do communion. You know, break bread with your brethren if you can. If you got to work. Hey, stay in the spirit on the clock, right? Enlighten your brothers and sisters at the job, you know, about the most high, high holy days. You know, put in your brick, man. And with that, i like to give all praise on and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Hamashiach, Amanawal, Barakata. It's HOY Las Vegas. It's HOY to the cherries fly. Shalom, Yasharalam. Kwam Yasharalam.